Hi guys! Hey there! Today we're gonna talk about a juicy and controversial topic Why people leave Canada And I think it's one of the most important videos for anyone to watch who's thinking about moving to Canada In the next 10 minutes I'm gonna talk about the overall state of the immigration in Canada As well as cover 7 reasons on why people moving to Canada decide to come back to their home country but before we begin, I would like to highlight that we are not going to discourage you from moving to Canada in the first place. Instead, we would like to point out some challenges and trade-offs that you have to go through to be able to succeed here. Looking at the Statistics Canada, almost one-third of Canadian immigrants move back to their home country within the first 20 years after moving to Canada. Almost half of those people who leave do that within the first year after immigration. Canada is very generous with the uh, immigration programs across the country. Over 300,000 immigrants are welcomed to the country on a yearly basis. Every fourth employee in Canada is an immigrant. And immigration accounts for over 80% of the population growth in Canada. All these numbers indicate that immigration is critical to the Canadian economic and social success. Wait, but... Why do people leave Canada? Why do immigrants decide to go back to their home countries even though Canada is positioning itself as so immigrant-friendly? Well, this is what this video is going to be about. So let's get started with the reason number one. So the reason number one is that they simply cannot find a job in Canada. The challenge with the most Canadian companies is that they look specifically for some Canadian experience. And if you don't have Canadian experience, some employers can take advantage of you and offer you a lower wage than they would have otherwise. References are also huge in Canada. You want to get a job? Show me your colleagues and bosses' references. You want to rent an apartment? Show me your landlord's references. And unfortunately, your country's references won't work because nobody's gonna make international calls. Okay, now let's look at the list of professions that Canada states is in need of. Looking at the category A and B, you see you have doctors, engineers, architects here. In order to get the license, you have to pass exams, get the local experience and sometimes even go back to school. And all that just so you can practice the craft of your life in a new country. And in order to get away with just a few exams, you have to graduate from a university that's accredited and recognized by Canada. And you have to make sure that the year it was recognized was dated before you graduated. So here are some of the things you can do to mitigate that. Well, actually you can't mitigate that. <laughs> One of the things you should be prepared for is take a step back. Be ready to take a lower wage job. Be ready to take a lower skill job for the first couple of months after you move to Canada while you're learning English, figuring things out in this country. Trust me, it will pay off in the future. You might also decide to take a couple of years off and go back to school and study to be able to practice your craft or maybe you'll decide to change your profession as a whole. It's totally normal and trust me, it will pay off and your career will skyrocket. Unfortunately, others realize they don't feel like doing that extra work over again that they've already done back in their country and they just don't have the energy or desire to do that. That's where they'd get disappointed in Canada and then they decide to leave. So our advice would be just be prepared for everything and be flexible. At the same time, stay positive and open-minded. So what's the next reason? And the next reason would be starting from scratch. As you already mentioned, starting from scratch can be very difficult. So let's elaborate on that a little bit. I personally know a doctor who has 10 years of medical career behind her back from her home country. And when she moved to Canada, she realized that she would have to do uh, four years of schooling again just to take the exams she needs to practice here in Canada. Imagine how hard it must be for you if you have 10 years of experience in your field and you realize that you have to start all over again, especially if it's uh, such a difficult and complicated field as medicine. And uh, it definitely might hurt your self-esteem and it's uh, such a bummer, so many people just decide that they should go back and be well-established and su successful back home. And unfortunately there are tons of examples like this. And depending on the field you're in, it may or may not be easy to get a license to be practicing. You'll have to pretty much start your career all over, but on the on the other hand, it may be very useful because you will learn more about work ethic here in Canada. If you're working in an engineering sphere, you will learn about codes and standards in engineering field. You will learn how to communicate with your co-workers and how office structure works here in Canada. That's exactly what she's doing right now. 
For some people, their first job in Canada would be some kind of survival job. I know some engineers or architects who started here as a barista at a coffee shop. But once you get your local experience, once once you get the foot in the door, you can start moving forward and you can uh, prove yourself as a real professional. However, some people don't actually have appetite for that. Unfortunately. It's a lot easier to go back to your country and get back to the things the way they've always been. Some people have established businesses back home, so starting something over from scratch in a new country sounds like too much of a hustle and just an insurmountable task to accomplish. My personal pro tip here is think about your next 5 to 10 years. What does it look like? What does your life look like? What does the life of your family and your kids look like? How do you see yourself when you're retired? What's just the overall future look like? These are all some of the important questions to ask to make the final decision on where you want to be and whether you want to move to Canada or not. Mm. Talking about cultural differences, this is by far number one reason I hear from Russians, Asians and Latin Americans why they leave Canada. Different culture and mentality, that's a big one. Exactly. Each country has its own culture. For instance, Russians are very direct, Europeans are very reserved, Latinos are usually very warm and friendly and easygoing, Asians have very strong family ties and cultural traditions. And here it's important to recognize that since Canada is a country of immigrants, you encounter all of those different cultures and traditions at once. And it means that different people have different ways of living, socializing and working together. Things like political correctness, for instance, are treated as dishonesty and conflict avoidance. People in Canada would rather complain behind your back than just have a face-to-face -face transparent conversation with you. Some immigrants look at it as something superficial. Some would say that Canada is boring, referring to lack of its culture and history compared to Europe. And some, especially Europeans, make fun of Canada for it being 10 years behind in fashion trends. And in Toronto and in Canada in general, we are proud of our diversity and actually we consider it to be our strength. You have to be curious and open-minded and appreciate the difference in cultures here in Canada. For some people, it's just not their cup of tea. They would rather preserve their cultural identity of their countries and battle with the people in Canada trying to convince them that their values and culture are superior or better. These people are set in their beliefs and their own ways of living and that's why they struggle adapting to Canada. They struggle advancing their careers, making friends and socializing and that's why they become lonely and just want to move back to their country. And that's right, because with the difficulty adapting to new cultures and traditions comes the feeling of loneliness. Most of us immigrants decide to move to a new country and leave their friends and family behind. And the fact that you have to get used to everything new is very hard and it's ma it makes it even harder if there is no one to come home to and there are no friends and family to support you here. Immigrants, especially those from uh, countries with cultures radically different from Canadian, struggle finding connections and friends here in Canada. Oftentimes, what you see is they resort to sticking to their ethnical communities. It's very common in Canada for immigrants to hang out with immigrants because we can relate to each other's struggles. Nevertheless, it's not enough for some people. Some people are longing for some deeper connections and for familiar places and familiar people and they just decide to leave Canada. It's understandable that one can miss their friends with whom they have a very long-lasting background and very strong ties. However, as the time goes, unfortunately many people become distant with their old friends from back home because they live in a new country, they experience different things, they start valuing things differently and they start uh, seeing life around them differently. And when you lose your old ties, it might seem like you're standing in the middle of the empty road and it's time for you to decide whether to go back to your old friends where you feel comfortable and everything is uh, very well known or it's time to move forward to the new beginnings. For some people it's easier to go back to their friends and family and to the place where everything is so familiar, where they feel comfortable and they understand everything easily. But for others returning is not an option and there is another group of people who decide to move elsewhere. But this is the whole other topic for another video. My personal advice would be just to stay flexible, stay open-minded, take your time, decision and change will come at their own pace. And in situations like this never feel pressured to make any decisions and listen to 
to yourself. On that note, let's shift the gears a little bit and talk about climate. Climate in Canada can be all over the place and sometimes unpredictable. If you're moving to Ontario, the weather here can be humid and very windy. If you're moving somewhere like Alberta, Calgary for instance, it's very dry there and the temperatures can go very very low so it can get really freezing cold. If you move somewhere like Montreal and just overall Quebec, the winters there can be rough, there can be just truckloads, dozens of truckloads of snow every winter and the summers will be really humid and hot. If you decide to move to Vancouver, you're still out of luck. The climate there is not great. It's constantly cloudy and it's raining there all the time, especially in the winter. So if you're from tropical countries, you will find the overall weather in Canada quite depressing. Canadians themselves sometimes try to escape winter at all costs. So what some immigrants do is they wait to get their Canadian passport and travel the world or escape winter for three to six months at a time to some warmer, more tropical country so that they can just avoid all that unpleasant weather and just enjoy the beautiful summers here in Canada. If it's not climate that you won't like in Canada, it's high taxes. That's a big one. In 2021, the average Canadian family will earn $124,000 in income and pay an estimated $48,000 in total taxes, which is about 40%. According to Fraser Institute, 41.3% of salary of an average Canadian goes to the government and you will never see it in your pay stub because it's automatically withdrawn by your employer. You also have to make mandatory contributions to Medicare and Social Security. Canada is famous for its Social Security and Medicare and many people are so glad that it's so free. But in fact, it's not free. It's all paid for by taxpayers. And when I say free Medicare, it's actually not free because there are still some services that you have to pay for. But that's the whole other topic for another video. And depending on which country you come from, giving away almost half of your income sounds crazy. In many places in Latin America, in Asia, and United States actually, the average income tax is around 30%. So Canada is a sizable, at least 10% larger than those countries. The tax impact can also differ depending on which profession you're in and the level of income that you have. I personally know someone who came here from Russia. He's a software engineer. He worked in Canada for about a year. Year. he was shocked by the amount of taxes that he pays and how little he gets back and he decided that he's actually better off coming back to Russia and living off the money that he'd make there. Well, to each their own, but this is just one example of why people decide to leave Canada. So let's zoom in into healthcare. I already mentioned that healthcare is not free in Canada because there are still th some things that you have to pay for. For instance, some advanced services, some medical tests and dental procedures. You'll still have to cash out for that. But just like some other countries, Canada has paid insurance that covers a portion of the cost on drugs and procedures. But the key word here is a portion. And that portion very rarely goes beyond 80%. So in general, the free healthcare in Canada just covers some bare basics of healthcare. And on top of that, there is a known shortage of doctors in Canada, which leads to long wait lists. And frankly, doctors themselves are overworked. One of the most frustrating things for me after coming to Canada was if you, let's say, um, have a heart problem and you know that it's a heart problem, you can't go directly to cardiologist. You have to go through the general practitioner first. And if the general practitioner can't treat you, they may decide to refer you to the cardiologist. And sometimes it might take some time to actually get to that doctor and get that referral. Because if you don't have a referral from the general practitioner, there's no way you're getting to the specialist doctor. I recently got a call from my hospital inviting me to do a medical exam that I signed up for two years ago. <laughs> All in all, Healthcare in Canada is strong and modern because if something happens and you experience a life-threatening condition, you will get help and you will get it real fast. I know examples of people who would complain about medicine in Canada, but when something serious happened, Canadian medical system saved that person's life. Nevertheless, some immigrants are very concerned with this topic and they decide to go back to their home countries where everything is familiar, they have connections and, you know, money can solve everything. Or if they they're in a hurry and they're willing to pay, they can go to the US to get some medical treatment. And some people go to southern countries like Cuba to get some dental procedures because it's cheaper. You get your teeth fixed and you get a vacation for the price of just getting your fixed teeth just here in Canada. Teeth and 10. 
all for one price. Having said that, Canada is an amazing place to live in. The grass is always greener on the other side. Each country has its own challenges and it's really up to every single one of you to decide what you're willing to deal with and what trade-offs you're willing to make and what priorities you have in life. One thing I'd highly recommend is do your homework and due diligence before moving to any country and know exactly what to expect including the worst case scenario and the best case scenario. That's a great advice. Guys, if you have any questions for us, please leave a comment below. Let us know which of these points got you worried the most and please don't forget to share your own stories and experiences. All in all, as usual, please click the like button and subscribe to our channel to make sure that you get a fresh issue of our videos on a weekly basis. And see you in the next one. Bye, friends. Ciao.